For the airplanes we fly, pressure altitude is a vital component for estimating performance during the various phases of flight. This is true in Archer aircraft, Cessna aircraft, Diamond aircraft, Cirrus aircraft, and, and, and many, many others. <laughs> so let's look at two quick ways to find pressure altitude. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you a dirty little secret about pressure altitude calculations. <laughs> let's get started. By definition, pressure altitude is the height above the standard datum plane. In plain English, no pun intended, that means pressure altitude is the altitude indicated by a properly calibrated altimeter when set to 29.92 inches mercury. And the easiest way to estimate pressure altitude is to use an altimeter. Let's look at an example. Earlier this morning, the altimeter setting was reported as 29.80. Setting the altimeter to 29.80 should mean the altimeter indication should approximate true altitude. In this case, my altimeter is indicating just above 1,280 feet. Looking at the airport diagram, it shows the elevation near where I'm parked is 1,282 feet, so this appears to be pretty accurate. If I change the altimeter setting to 29.92, that means the indicated altitude should now equal pressure altitude. In our case, turning the knob to 29.92 shows our pressure altitude to be just a hair over 1,380 feet. I'd guess it to be 1,382 feet. <laughs> so there you have it. Pretty simple. We can now use 1,382 feet to help us estimate our aircraft performance. But how do you calculate pressure altitude if you aren't sitting in front of an altimeter? A quick and easy method for estimating pressure altitude is to subtract the current altimeter pressure setting from the standard sea level pressure of 29.92. Then multiply the result by 1,000. Then, add that result to the field elevation if you're trying to find pressure altitude on the ground, or your flight elevation if you're trying to figure out pressure altitude while en route. Let's use the same numbers from this morning to see what we get. So 29.92 minus 29.80 gives us 0 0.12. Multiplying that by 1,000 gives us 120 feet. And adding that to the field elevation of 1,282 feet gives us an estimated pressure altitude of 1,402 feet. And while it's not exactly what we got using the altimeter, it is pretty close. There's only 20 feet of difference. This is close enough to use with the performance charts in your POH. For good measure, let's look at another example. This time, we'll use 30.25 as the local altimeter setting. So 29.92 minus 30.25 equals a negative 0 0.33. Multiplying negative 0 0.33 by 1,000 equals negative 330 feet. My station altitude of 1,282 plus a negative 330 equals a pressure altitude of 952 feet. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. So now we've demonstrated that non-standard atmospheric pressure can impact pressure altitude both positively and negatively. We've seen two ways to estimate pressure altitude, and we've gotten some practice at both. If this makes sense and was helpful, please hit the like button so more people can see it. Oh, but wait! Before you leave, there's more! Now that we've seen the two easy methods, I need to share that there's another, more complicated method for determining pressure altitude. <laughs> I can hear you saying, other than the fact that Scott is a total nerd, why should I care about this more complicated formula? Well. Using the first formula provides estimates good enough for flight planning, but it probably won't get you the right answer on your written test. Why not, you ask? Well, you see, the formula we just demonstrated assumes that there's a linear relationship between altimeter settings and pressure altitude. Unfortunately, the relationship is just a little bit more complicated. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, the actual formula for determining pressure altitude looks like this. <laughs> Not likely something you'll be calculating in your head. Let's look at a graph of both formulas so that we can compare the results. As you can see, the actual pressure altitude formula describes a curve. If you look even closer, you will also see something very interesting. The online Guinness World Records site notes the lowest atmospheric pressure ever recorded is 870 millibars, or 25.69 inches mercury. And the highest pressure was 1,083.8 millibars, or 32 inches mercury. If we only look at that portion of the graph, the curve is so slight that it appears to be a straight line. And the two formulas appear to have very similar results. To be clear, they aren't the same results, but they are similar. Additionally, 
Because the written test is standardized and designed to make sure you understand the concepts, you will need to provide more precision than is required to use the airplane manufacturer's performance charts. <laughs> so, do you have to memorize and learn the more complicated formula? Well, fortunately, the answer is no. If you look on page 11.3 of the most recent PHAC, you will see a table listing correction factors for the different altimeter settings. If you guessed that these correction factors were the result of the more complicated formula, you would be absolutely correct. So, my advice to you would be to use the linear formula for determining pressure altitude when doing your flight planning, because it is simple, with a little practice easy to use, and the results fall within tolerances needed by the POH. However, when calculating pressure density altitude for your written test, you should use the correction factors found in the PHAC or on page 2-8 of the Airman Knowledge Testing Supplement, that little booklet provided to you during the exam. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button. Also, please share this with two friends you think would find it helpful. Take care, fly safely, and we'll see you next time.